Changi Airport, Singapore. One of the largest transportation hubs in Asia and voted the best airport in the world is about to launch what's been touted as an industry game changer. The ambition we have set forth was unprecedented. Terminal 4. With full automation, passengers will be able to serve themselves from check-in to boarding. Today, Changi is one step closer to changing the aviation model. How do you create something for that moment that you didn't expect? But to deliver the airport's latest terminal, the team must conquer the unfamiliar. Yeah, yes, yes, really, yeah. Come on, come on, guys. We need to green up 50,000 square meters of greenery. That is five football fields. Using cutting edge technology, they are breaking new ground. So we're actually lifting up a small car here. To redefine what air travel is all about. Expectations are very high. I mean, one Changi to continue to be the best airport in the world. Tiny tropical island, logistics hub, and financial powerhouse. Singapore is also home to Changi Airport. For six years in a row, Changi has been voted the best airport in the world. Every week, more than 7,000 flights connect over a million passengers to 400 cities worldwide. The airport recorded a new high of 62 million passengers in 2017. Globally, the number of air travelers is set to double to 7.2 billion by 2035. To meet this demand, Changi is expanding. In four months' time, their latest development will open. Terminal 4. A two-storey space packed with art and greenery features that will be one of the world's first fully automated terminals. Morning, guys. Have their gate staff all been trained in operating the door 4 and door 5 for boarding? We do see a more varied uh, profile of travellers across board. The thirst for speed, the thirst for efficiency, the thirst for being able to have control of their own journey, even through the airport. And automation to us is one key uh, answer to such demands. General Manager for Trials, Kelvin Tan, is leading the charge, ensuring the team is ready for its big opening. Today, 200 volunteers will take part in an experiment to trial the new technology in place. I think the team is a little jittery. We are having trial participants from the members of the public who are totally unfamiliar with the system. This is the first time they are interacting with all this equipment. Anyone for spring at 9, 9 C? These volunteers are meant to simulate the journey of passengers and must pass through all new automated stages. Check-in, bag drop, immigration, and boarding. All this without coming into contact with ground staff. Having worked at Changi Airport for six years, today is Kelvin's ultimate test. It is easier for the more tech-savvy or the young ones, but we wanted to make sure that even a 80 year old grandmother could go through it with as minimal assistance as possible. Uh, so just, just basically just follow the steps we We are part of Singapore, part of Changi Airport. <laughs> the technology has changed from Terminal 1 and up to Terminal 4. While the volunteers prepare for the experience, teams are working around the terminal to bring it to life. 
This is pedal element number eight. Start with a red one and now full on. Well, we have automated uh, kiosk, check-in, so on and so forth. Even our art is also high-tech. Daniel Fu and Po Li San have been involved in Terminal 4 since its conception in 2012. In the airport, the foundation is having uh, sufficient capacity. We know that we wanted to do something quite different for Terminal 4. We have a philosophy of rethinking travel. We want to push further our boundaries to look at innovative concepts and also the latest technology on how we can further enhance passenger experience. The team commissioned artists to make pieces specifically for Terminal 4. Artworks are aimed at keeping stress levels of passengers down. Somehow or other, whenever I travel as a passenger, I'm always very stressed out. What we want is to actually um, have selected uh, art pieces uh, sprinkled in Terminal 4. That in itself reduces the stress of the passenger to enjoy the journey. To top it off, a centerpiece that will span over 200 meters floating above the central galleria. Designed after Singapore's national flower, the orchid, it is called the Petal Clouds. Once complete, it will be one of the world's largest kinetic sculptures. So when you're designing these kind of kinetic sculptures, the physical materiality in space is hugely important. They're not machines. The work was conceived by Yusi Angsleva, the designer responsible for the kinetic rain in Changi Airport's Terminal 1. The whole thing is definitely a sculpture first and foremost, and it's kinetic. Yusi's design work begins with animation and computer modeling. We then tried different kinds of material combinations, uh, did an on-site test during the constructions to get really the, the right matching perfect uh, solution. So the project here is very much pushing the limits in all directions. The team needs to first assemble all custom-made components flown in from Germany. 5,000 components, 96 elements, strung up by 384 ropes, about 200 mottos, all concealed uh, away from the passenger's eye. It's a bit like Lego, yeah. Lego is for small, for small boys. This one is a little bit more complicated. Today is the first time that the team are lifting up the final petals. One element itself weighs about 40 kg. And if you talk about 16 of these forming one cloud, it's about half ton. So we're actually lifting up a small car here in this space. So I'm pretty excited, but also at the same time, pretty nervous. Lifting the petals are 192 motors located in the rafters above. We have all 32 engines to be online. So far, it's looking good. Moritz? Yeah? Are you there in position with the count five at the first element? The first element, you mean one? Yeah, exactly. Okay, you lift up only one. Number one. Okay. Three years of building the petal clouds culminates now. Start moment. Once the motors are engaged, they will contract the cable and pull up the petals. I just have to make sure it doesn't fall. <laughs> yes, no problem. Yeah. Each petal element is made of lightweight aluminium. Suspended on steel cables that can hold 40 times its weight. Uh, finally, the clouds are literally moving upwards. Very smooth. I'm very happy today. As work continues on mechanical petals, attention turns to living ones. We need to green up 50,000 square metres of greenery. That is five football fields. If you put all of them together, it's almost like half a million plants from shrubs right up to six, seven meter trees in T4 itself. 
To help with this task is Changi Airport's very own nursery. Spread over 120,000 square meters, it grows over 500 species of plants for the four terminals. In charge is head of horticulture Kaja Nazimuddin, who's been working at Changi Airport for 12 years. I've always loved the outdoors, either working with uh, plants or working with uh, nature, wildlife. I've always loved that. Changi was the first in the world to introduce airport gardens. In doing so, replicating the vision for Singapore as a garden city. Changi is the first stop into the country and the last stop out of the country. So where bells to show your garden cities starts and ends. If you walk around many airports, do you find a place, a butterfly garden or sunflower gardens to go and relax before your next flight? Greenery plans for Terminal 4 are bigger than anything the team has previously taken on. For over three years, Kaja and his team have been sourcing and growing plants and trees that will line the terminal walkways. You're walking among the trees. It was a fantastic feeling. And we knew that this was the one that's going to make a difference to T4. But lower light levels of indoor gardens pose a huge challenge. Careful planning is required to ensure plants thrive once at the terminal. Some, uh, tiger orchids. Ah, okay, good, good, good. How long have they been here now? Two weeks, three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. Uh. Three weeks, huh? Uh, okay, the, the plant that plant, the tiger. That's good, that's good. Yeah, okay. Ah, okay, great. This looks good. Where well, you have built a shade house and you have uh, dark black nettings to cut down the light. Depending on the plant types, you cut down 30% of light, some you cut down 50%. And leaving them there for what? six months to one year or even to 18 months, depending on the plant. One tree that has adapted is this 12-metre-tall agathis. Today, the team has to transport it 25 kilometres from the nursery to the airport. OK, we're going to lift the tree. We're going to lift it up. It is a very slow process. Probably you do one tree a day or two trees a day, depending on the size of the tree. I mean, the worst thing is to lose them while you're transporting. You break a branch or you break half a tree. And I don't know how stressful is that for trees, but it is obviously very stressful for me and my team. Because we want to ensure that every tree is brought into the terminal in a good condition. Okay, go. Terminal 4 will be Changi Airport's greenest ever terminal, displaying Singapore's reputation as a garden city. The next key ingredient, a 12 meter tall agathis tree, one of over half a million plants that will create a massive garden inside the terminal. The minute you get a tree out of the nursery, the first thing you want to do is plant it as quickly as you can. Damage or stress to the tree could prevent it from adapting to its new indoor home. It's been cared for at the nursery for two and a half years. Slowly, yeah, yes, yes. slowly. It's in a very fragile situation. We don't want to keep it too long in this. This is the most uh, critical and most stressed part for me. They have to move on. Come on, come on, guys. Watch the branches. This 12-metre tree weighs 3,000 kilograms, as heavy as an adult rhinoceros. Holy, yeah? All hands are required on deck. You just guide him slowly, guide him slowly. It takes you like two to three hours to position a tree, just to position it correctly into the hole. And then the big, big part of all this is doing the straightening up. OK, OK, Pidani, OK. There has to be some excitement in life. So this is one of the excitements we have in planting trees. Maybe a pull, 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 pull. Finally, one of the tallest trees in Terminal 4 is in position. What we have gone through the last four hours is worth the effort and I think she'll come back just fine. Give it about a month, it will look like the tree has been growing there from day one. 
Kaja and his team still have half a million more plants to settle into Terminal 4. Back at the trials, the volunteers are testing out Changi Airport's newest features. They will next need to deposit their bags, a process traditionally handled by a check-in agent is now being automated. Automation uh, is used in uh, various parts of travel. It just hasn't really been strung together in a coherent fashion as what we're trying to do in T4. It wasn't easy for us. There aren't that many references around the world available for us to look at. The automated bag drop machines are capable of handling up to 5,400 bags hourly. Go Chen Yi must make sure they work fast and precisely. To get our machines fully ready, we place thousands and thousands of bags through the full system. Without the watchful eye of an agent, the team had to develop an alternative to accurately verify all the bags. The solution, utilizing special cameras normally found in a games console device. These three are but connect this is... one, connect two, and connect three. Okay. Each each connect will take its own 3D view of the back. Yeah, yeah. All the three images will, will get stitched. Using three cameras, the system forms a 3D image of the bag. A million data points are analyzed in seconds. These cameras allow us to have that bit of a, a security that ensures that only the right stuff get accepted into this, this system. If the image exceeds the dimensions, the bag will get rejected and it won't be processed. If the bag is within limits, it will be allowed to enter the system. With man and machine working in tandem, the volunteers have successfully checked themselves in. A volunteer is being paged. Okay, the public announcement has gone off. We are looking for a particular passenger. She has been asked to proceed to the information counter. The volunteers were given dummy bags at the start of the trials. What they don't know is that within some of these bags are prohibited items. If there's anything suspicious that we pick up in the bag, we have to call the passenger for reconciliation. Essentially, it's asking the passenger to open his or her bag. We just need to make sure that the item we saw uh, is nothing indiscriminating that cannot be uplifted into the aircraft. Calvin to Jen. Calvin to Jen, are you at G19? But in today's trials, the volunteer is nowhere to be found. OK, uh, is the boarding gate staff there already? Paging passenger to our way, joining Spring Airlines flight 9C1182. Please go ahead. Baggage Street Constellation is all about time. So it's how quickly can we assemble the resources to bring them back to the reconciliation room? How quick can we find the passenger, locate the passenger, and bring the passenger down from the boarding gate to the reconciliation room again? Finally, the checks can begin. Follow me to the reconciliation room. Common prohibited items found in check-in bags include flammable items. Terminal 4 security personnel have to be on their toes to spot them when the bags are screened in today's trials, even if the volunteers are merely role-playing. Oh, this scenario that we play out, I think the responses from the various parties were, I think, meet our expectations and they reacted accordingly.
Singapore's Changi Airport is gearing up for a brand new terminal. Counting down to opening, the team are ensuring the security of new automated systems. At the trials, the focus is now on the immigration stage. Each time a passenger is entering into an area of a higher security, you have to show proof that your identity is indeed a valid one. In Changi's other terminals, security staff check a passenger's likeness against their passport picture. At Terminal 4, the team has made a breakthrough. It's quick. If I want to do a verification of your thumbprint right now, I need to first have in my database uh, a record of your thumbprint. But facial recognition is simple. I just have to have your passport photo or any kind of photo for that matter. The facial recognition gates use a matching process. Using the eyes as an anchor, the technology analyzes prominent facial features and calculates the distances between them. The photo taken and the passport must match to allow the person through. So this person over here, you can see these points on his face who's uh, slightly angled. What the system does is it's intelligent enough to automatically move those points back to where they should be. And from there, it creates a full frontal symmetrical image that looks something like this. But today, the technology is facing teething problems. Some volunteers have not been allowed through the gates. So this is a status for today. OK. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it is a biometric reduction. Yes, correct. We try to understand if uh, it's got to do with the passport's quality, uh, passengers' behaviour, ergonomics. From this data, we are able to, to track the reasons surrounding it. Um, that we can, we can fix the problem. Long security queues are a major stress point for travellers. As Terminal 4 occupies the smallest land area of all Changi's terminals, the team opted for a centralised screening area. With over 20,000 people eventually coming through daily, the challenge for project manager Po Li San is to ensure fast operations and few queues. Passengers get quite anxious about going through the security screening. Our key focus for this area is to transform it from a stressful to a stress-free area. A new automated tray return system helps passengers quickly deposit their items. Terminal 4 also makes Changi the first airport in the world to employ computer tomography or CT scanners for security. More often found in hospitals, these scanners provide a detailed 3D perspective of a bag's contents. CT X-rays will also help to speed up the entire screening process for passengers. While solving a major inconvenience, passengers no longer have to remove laptops and tablets from their bags. The final addition to the screening area is a 70-metre giant immersive wall. Its 8.3 million pixels will showcase the destinations Terminal 4 will service around the region. The whole ambience of being very peaceful, helping passengers to kind of reduce their stresses of flying. While the trialists keep their cool, hidden away from everyone, another team is being challenged by the trials. This time, down in the baggage facility. Sam? Hello, good morning. Calling from control room. Yes. Uh, we accepted 200 bags. So these bags are? I need to report by the flight number. OK, Roger. Okay, thank you. This is Terminal 4's state-of-the-art baggage handling area. Thousands of bags will come through these belts hourly, one every second. Bag tags with the corresponding flight details are autonomously scanned. They are then routed on trays at 2.3 metres a second around the conveyors until they reach their belt. 
So in in every systems where there are full automation, there are always be cases where uh, some text back text are not being read. In a situation where the uh, barcode reader is unable to read the back text, it will then require a manual intervention. In the rare occurrence a tag is unable to be read, bags are routed to the manual encoder room. Can we just check whether our manual encoders are being able to cope with the high volume of bags? Preparing for every eventuality, today's trial will stress test the manual system with 200 bags. When the bags queue up and the process is slow, it increase the risk of the bag not being able to reach the flight and that will translate to best passenger experience when they are unable to receive their bags when they reach the other destination. 21.6 million bags were reported lost or misdirected worldwide in 2016. To reduce lost bags at Changi, engineer Xiu Che Wen and his team must be fully prepared to make sure no delays occur. Keep calm and take a step back and really to decide what needs to be done. If you panic, then uh, probably everything will go wrong. I need to scan the bag when you're very fast. I don't do fast, the passenger cannot get the bag. Can we see how the manual encoders are doing? If the these are being good. Okay, so one line clear. Good job. Thank you. These bags are now en route to the trial flight. All except one. We only received one nine nine pieces. Would you be able to check the last piece for us? Across 10 kilometers of conveyor belts, Cherwen's team must race to hunt one missing bag. Changi Airport's first fully automated terminal is close to opening. Trials are reaching their climax, with one simulated flight ready to depart. But down below in the baggage handling area, a bag is missing. We only receive one nine nine pieces. Would you be able to check the last piece for us? Uh, tag number is AK103470. In the case of Changi Airport, because of the scales of the number of bags that we need to sort in the systems, it looks like a maze. Finding one bag among 4,000 in the system might seem like looking for a needle in a haystack. Can we take a look where the current location of the bags is? But there's a secret in the way the bags are sorted. At the baggage control room, we have all the information that's needed to be able to track uh, where the bags is in the systems. It is actually organized in a disorganized way. The bags are placed on individual numbered trays. Tray numbers and bag tag codes are paired up. So when a bag needs to be found, from the control room, a simple search reveals the location and the status of the bag before discharging it to the right destination. Okay, now the bag on the way to rest track, just they indicated in our system. Terminal 4 is one of the first terminals in Asia to use this type of sortation technology. The bag is yeah. discharged ready. Yeah, discharged Let's pass. OK, copy it. We have received all uh, 200 pieces back. Thank you so much. Every single show is important because when an uh, actual situation really happens, it ensures that we are well prepared and therefore the passenger will probably not realise it, even that there is a slight fault in the systems. The trial flight is ready to depart. Volunteers now pass through the automated boarding gates. Virtual <laughs> and mental flying on Air Asia. <laughs> and with that, their virtual holiday is over. If you want speed, then that's where technology will come in. And that has to change with times because we are moving forward and there are a lot of technological changes. I embrace the change. The system here is a lot more sophisticated. This is really a good simulation exercise before they implement it. Next, the key findings are digested by the team. If we were to open a terminal without such a robust and rigorous program, 
I could imagine people getting lost in the terminal. They probably can't even find their way to the check-in desk. They will start realizing that, hey, I don't understand a single instruction of the kiosk. This backdrop simply doesn't work. Ready for DK9720. Please text the, for the first five bags, all the bags from check-in, right? The, the form is incorrect because it only contains seven digits. So all these bags, right, our system cannot read the tag. More work needs to be done to get these systems to speed. 7,000 more volunteers will come through the gates before this billion-dollar terminal is ready for its first passengers. We noted there were some areas for improvements so that we could address them early. And by the time comes, 24 opens, everything will be smooth and running. Reflecting Singapore's identity is a key element of Terminal 4's story. We are a very unique culture with melting pot of you know, different uh, ethnicities, different races, different religions. One of the challenges of um, designing T4 is how do we make this terminal a microcosm of the whole Singapore city, also being an introduction to our foreign passengers who's coming through our doors into Singapore. To do so, the Changi team have turned to history enthusiast Tan Wei Xin. Infusing Singapore's culture into the design, they are replicating colorful pre-war shop houses that line the streets of downtown Singapore. They have this rich history, you know, that we have, and uh, we want to share with everybody. We, we value our heritage, we want to preserve this, and we want to exhibit it. Yeah, and, and show everyone. Wei Xin has 30 years of set design experience and knows what is needed to bring that culture to life. It has to be authentic. That means uh, you have to detail. Detailing is the key to everything. And having that details and you got to put it in proportion and get the, everything right. You know, the colours, the tone, dressing to it. This is the Heritage Zone. It will celebrate Peranakan culture, the product of intermarriages between locals and earlier immigrants from China, India and Western countries. Sparking off a distinctive blend of designs now presented here in the terminal. Ooh, look what I got. Wow, this is good. Yep. Ah, great. Ah. Oh, really, really, yeah, it really, really suits the game. All the Parakan elements in it, the birds, the phoenix, you know, the colour, yeah. yeah, and it's really perfect. The final element of the design is a concealed screen that doubles as a digital theatre stage for a six-minute musical, all to entertain and preserve a culture unique to the region. I realised that uh, way back then, though we are fishing village, uh, yet we have art with us, you know. And I hope uh, uh, it will inspire others to search for their heritage and you know, uh, to learn more about our roots. Singapore's history, now interwoven into Terminal 4. Terminal 4 is now just one month away from opening. With Changi Airport's world-leading reputation at stake, it is imperative its latest expansion is a success. Let's see the night one. Final touches are underway to prepare for the big opening. Breathing life into the spaces are half a million plants, with Terminal 4 now Changi's greenest. Just add in a bit more soil around the edges. For the plants to thrive in their new home, Kaja and his team need to make sure the soil is well drained. In some days, you overwater, and some days you underwater. Because we don't want it to hold too much water, because you don't have direct sun, and the water will not evaporate that fast. And then we specially built in uh, misting and foggers in our landscapes to ensure that the plants get sufficient uh, humidity. 
gone are the days when you have one gardener going around doing manual watering. Throughout the day, automated watering will keep the plants growing at optimum level. Including these 12 meter tall trees, all 160 of them planted by Kaja and his team. The trees with this height will always be a wow for passengers. Having people standing around and admiring your tree, it's almost like an, uh, someone standing next to a painting and admiring a painting. And yours is not a painting, yours is a living thing. Every day you have to ensure that the tree is surviving. For an horticulturist, the job is never finished. It's just one chapter of a book that runs into many chapters. It's like pregnancy and giving birth. So you've just given birth, now you have to raise your child. All around, Terminal 4's features emerge. Now, with the orchid petal motif on show across the spaces, the stage is set for lead designer Yusi to finish work on the centerpiece. The petal clouds, one of the largest kinetic sculptures in the world. At the moment, we are on site, so we suddenly have all the physical parameters of the space to factor in and think about just the right adjustment. Either it's a monster in your face or it's elegant. Using custom-made software that controls the movement of the petal elements, the team has to synchronize the light settings and motion of all six clouds to a bespoke music composition. Paddle Cloud consisted approximately 3,000 pages of software coding. And it is tantamount to actually building a satellite in space. Here, it's needed to move 4,000 kilograms of metal gracefully. People spend maybe two hours there, but they have their mind maybe already somewhere else. So how do you create something for that moment that is special, that is surprising, that is something that you didn't expect? Yusi's ambitious artwork requires incredible precision. The motors contract and release the cables over nine meters, giving movement to the petals and powering up the lights within them. It's a, I think, yeah, I think we still need more lights. Thomas, can I give you 7,500 from the ocean? That looks good. When I first saw it moving, it kind of, you know, yeah, you get cool pimples. And this is kind of the thing that if it works for me like that, I hope that it'll, it'll have the same effect for many others. Art does not need to be very esoteric. As long as I'm able to touch someone's life, just one person, it's all totally worth it because someone at the end of the day appreciated it, understood it and know that this is something that's spectacular. Its centerpiece now fully operational. Terminal 4 is ready for the first passengers. Through four years of development, a 4,000-strong team has transformed this 225,000 square meter space. Now, Terminal 4 is born. We don't build new terminals every other day, so this is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do a really good job in this new terminal. Today, Changi's new systems. Carefully developed automated technology are put into use. Opening day also welcomes a new member of the Changi team. Automated cleaning equipment, or ACE for short. Four robots are able to autonomously map the floor areas, sense obstacles, 
and clean up to 1,600 square meters per hour, all with minimal or no supervision. The real test for the day is how quickly the passengers can be processed. Do you always have somebody, you know, do manually doing this for you, but this is a totally automatic thing that's going to do. I think it's way more efficient. We always use computers anyway, so it's pretty easy. 800 flights a week will jet off to 20 different countries around the region. One of the first flights is leaving soon. Behind the scenes, Chen Yi's team is keeping a watchful eye over the automated systems to make sure all passengers get to the gate on time. Do we see a consistent pattern that is always happening to this particular gate? To confirm that this gate is fine on ground? Yeah. Although working autonomously, the facial recognition technology can be monitored from the back office and the team can mitigate any errors before they occur. So usually if uh, we pick up some uh, indications of devices being unavailable from this system, we can very quickly zoom in to understand where the problem is to see if we have a quick fix for it. Usually they are not apparent to a typical passenger. So for now it looks to be okay, it seems to be okay. Back on the ground, Kelvin Tan is on the lookout to ensure that no hiccups occur. Everything is going smooth, going as planned. I think the hard work put in during the trials and all the system tests has paid off. His four years of hard work are now being realised. The ambition, vision that we have set for for T4 um, was unprecedented. No one would want to open a new terminal with such complex systems in place. And I'm glad we make it work. While time is needed before novelty becomes the norm, passengers are getting to grips with the terminal's new technology. It's quite obviously a new thing for most people to have uh, automation from the start to the end of their departure journey. Over time, uh, as more people get used to it, uh, we will be able to then focus our resources on those people that really need it, elderly or, or younger children. Changi Airport's evolution will continue. Further expansion will soon bring overall capacity to up to 135 million passengers a year. We need to use T4 as an intermediate juncture to test some of these new concepts, new technology, so that when we plan for T5, we know exactly what we are putting into this new big terminal. T4 is a terminal that will be an emblem of how future terminals could also look like. From fast technology to ambitious art and installations and half a million plants, this terminal of tomorrow has come to life. All passengers and check-in bags accounted for. Time for takeoff. A new era for Changi Airport begins. I think very clearly the recipe for success in Changi is clearly from the people and the passion for the passengers. I think it's also a national pride that we want Changi to continue to be the best airport in the world.